The insane downfall of Anthony Rendon's career needs to be studied. When the Washington Nationals won it all back in 2019, Rendon was one of the best players in not just the National League, but in all of baseball that season. He was incredible, but at the same time, Rendon was in the final year of his contract before becoming a free agent, and he wasn't the only one, with World Series MVP Steven Strasburg becoming one as well. The Nationals ended up making the decision to choose one of the two and went with Strasburg. That decision hasn't turned out great, in fact it's been a total nightmare. Strasburg has barely pitched since re-signing with the Nationals after the 2019 World Series, has mostly been hurt, and is to a point now where he may never pitch again. So based on that alone, you'd probably think, yeah, the Nats would likely be happier with choosing Anthony Rendon instead, someone who got the same exact contract Strasburg did, but no. Rendon has been nothing but a complete disaster for the Angels the last three years, so it's not like much would be different if the Nats chose to move on from Strasburg and keep Rendon. Make sure to like the video, subscribe, and join the awesome subscribers of the channel as the Anthony Rendon contract is one of the worst deals in sports. To immediately kick off his Angels career, Rendon was great. He put up really good numbers in 2020. But then again, it was 2020 in just a 52 game sample size. As for 2021, it wouldn't take very long for Rendon to start hitting the injured list, getting put on the injured list in early April because of a groin strain. Less than a month later, a left knee contusion would put him back on the injured list. And then a couple months after that, Rendon was put on the injured list yet again for the third time because of a left hamstring strain. And about a month after that, the Angels announced he'd be getting season-ending surgery to repair a right hip impingement. So he barely played, and when he did, he wasn't very good. Not what you want, but you'll get him next year. Well, next year ended up playing out even worse for Rendon, with him playing less games than he did in 2021, and he didn't even play that many games in 2021, obviously. In the middle of June, Rendon would get surgery on his right wrist, presumably knocking him out for the rest of 2022. He did end up coming back at the very end, but by that point, the Angels had no shot at the playoffs, so Rendon could have went off in the final three games and it would have meant nothing. So chalk down 2022 is another loss for the Rendon contract. Okay, 2023, the third full season of Rendon's seven-year $245 million contract. Third time's a charm, it's gotta be. Well, the 2023 season didn't start off too hot for Rendon. In fact, it took just one day for him to get looked at negatively after he had a mildly violent confrontation with an Oakland A's fan grabbing his shirt and then attempting to slap him for talking trash, it was all recorded on camera and he got suspended and fined for it. Anthony Rendon was just recently put back on the injured list. For the third time this season, which is more times than he's hit a home run. Seriously, and it gets even more wild when you realize this. As things currently stand, in the first three full years of his Angels contract, Anthony Rendon has played just about the same amount of games in these last three seasons combined than he played in 2019 alone. In 2019, Rendon played 146 games for the Nationals and finished third in the NL MVP voting. From the start of the 2021 season all the way till now where we stand in 2023, Rendon has played in 148 games and he's played in just 200 over the last four seasons since the start of the shortened 2020 season. So he's not really playing at all due to so many stints on the IL and when he does find his way onto the field, he's not good. Since the start of 2021, Rendon has hit just 235 with an OPS right at 700. His OPS plus is below league average, in other words, he's been a below league average hitter over these last three seasons when he plays, which is rare on its own. Oh yeah, and he's making a total of over $100 million from 2021 through the end of 2023. Now he's back shelved on the injured list for god knows how long, and this is part of the problem for the Angels over the years. They don't necessarily have the best contract situations. Albert Pujols was not as good after signing his massive contract in Anaheim, the same now goes for Rendon, and it could end up having an effect on keeping Otani. That's why I like to be very balanced on how I feel with owners giving out big contracts. I do agree and feel that there are cheap penny pinching owners who aren't as invested into their team as they should be and they need to be better. But at the same time, throwing huge contracts to everyone recklessly is not a good thing to do for your team either. And the Anthony Rendon deal is a perfect example of that. Sometimes it's best not to give players a big contract because they could end up regressing, getting hurt too much. It happens all the time. You truly never know, obviously. Signing players to big contracts is always a gamble, but that's why it's good to not be cheap, but to also be smart about who you commit to on your team. That's obvious, basic stuff, but to be too extreme with spending can be just as bad as being extremely cheap. It's all about balance and being careful who you give these big money deals to. And with the case of Anthony Rendon, it's turned 
turned out to be a horrible investment. Maybe he'll magically turn things around and channel his vintage national form over these next three and a half years. But with the way things are going, it's just it's not good right now at all. The Angels really got screwed over by this contract. Rendon has done virtually nothing for this team since signing with them, a team that still owes him $114 million for the next three seasons. Ouch. Let me know what you think. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.